having twelve gates. For the entrance into this holy city is free to all nations and generations, excluding none, but inviting all, so that no one shall be deprived of the mediation of this Queen of Mercy for obtaining the gifts and graces, nor the eternal glory of the Most High. In the gates were twelve angels. These twelve princes are those mentioned above as being among the ones selected as the guardians of the mother of the incarnate word. The service of these twelve angels, besides attending to their queen, was to assist especially and to defend those souls who devoutly call on Mary our queen for help, and who distinguish themselves in their devotion, veneration, and love for her. Therefore the evangelist says that he saw them in the gates of that city. They are the ministers, and, as it were, the servants, who are to help encourage and accompany the mortals in entering into the portals of piety opened by the Most Holy Mary to eternal happiness. Many times does she send them with inspirations and favors in order to snatch those from the dangers of body and soul who invoke her and are her devout servants. He continues, And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. For the angels receive their names according to the ministry and service for which they are sent to the earth. And because these twelve princes are especially attached to the service of the Queen of Heaven in order that they may assist in the salvation of men, and because all the elect are included with the twelve tribes of Israel, forming the holy people of God, therefore the evangelist says that the angels bear the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. To each one of the twelve tribes one of these angels is assigned. Under their charge and protection are all those that from every nation and generation enter through the portals of the intercession of Most Holy Mary into the celestial Jerusalem. Wondering at this exaltation of the Most Pure Mary, and that she should be the mediatrix and the portal of all the predestined, I was given to understand that this prerogative befits her, who, as Mother of Christ, was to do such great things for men conjointly with her Most Holy Son. For she furnished him from her own purest blood and substance with a body, in which he suffered and redeemed men. On account of her close connection with his flesh and blood, she, in a manner, died and suffered in Christ, freely of her own will, accompanying him in his passion and death, suffering with him according to her power with heavenly humility and fortitude. Thus, as she cooperated in his passion and offered herself as a victim for the human race, so the same Lord made her a participant in his dignity of Redeemer and placed her in charge of the merits and fruits of the redemption to be distributed by her own hand and communicated to the redeemed. O admirable treasurer of God! How secure are in thy heavenly and bountiful hands the riches of the Omnipotent. Hence this city had three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west, etc. The three gates, corresponding to each of the four quarters of the world, invite all the mortals to draw near to him who is the creator of all, namely, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Each of the three persons desires and ordains that Most Holy Mary should be in possession of the gates for soliciting the divine treasures for mortals. Although there is but one God in three persons, 
each one for himself concedes free entrance and admission to this most pure queen, in order that before the tribunal of the immutable and triune being, she may intercede, solicit, and receive gifts and graces for those that seek her and honor her in the world. Therefore, as there are not one but three portals in every direction, none of the mortals anywhere in the universe and of any nation and tribe shall have an excuse. The entrance into free and open city gates is so easy that if anyone fails to enter, it is not because the gates prevent him, but because he himself tarries and does not wish to seek safety. What then shall the infidels, heretics, and pagans say? And what excuse have the bad Christians and the obstinate sinners? If the treasures of heaven are in the hands of our mother and lady, if she continues to call us and solicit us through her angels, if she opens not one but many gates to heaven, how is it that there are so many who remain outside and so few who enter through them. And the walls of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the twelve names of the apostles of the Lamb. The strong and unshakable foundations upon which God built up the holy city of Mary, his mother, are her virtues, as governed and proportioned in her by the Holy Ghost. He enumerated twelve, corresponding with the names of the apostles, in order to show that it is founded upon the surpassing sanctity of the apostles, who are the leaders among the saints. For according to the saying of David, the foundations of the city of God are placed upon the holy mountains, and also inversely, the sanctity and wisdom of Mary grounded and confirmed the apostles after the death and ascension of Christ. Although she was always there instructress and model, yet in those times she alone was the chief support of the primitive church. Now because she was destined and endowed for this office by the corresponding virtues and gifts from the moment of her immaculate conception, Therefore, they are called the Twelve Foundations of this City of God. <laughs>